here's an interesting question. So how do you keep yourself uh, up to date with uh, the latest uh, in cybersecurity and in bug bounties? Um, so that's a really interesting question. I think it's really important to keep yourself up to date, even if you don't understand what you're reading necessarily, um, because I think it's, it's like learning a language, right? Um, the language is cybersecurity. You need to immerse yourself in it. You need to be reading stuff, even if it's above kind of your skill level, you don't really understand it, but you still want to be exposed to it quite early on, I think. Um, so for me, that means um, I use Twitter a lot. I follow some of the best hackers. I'm always reading write-ups and disclosed reports. Um, I'm always part of various communities that share those as well. So I'm constantly exposing myself to stuff that's either above my level or maybe at my level, but a little bit more advanced. So it's constant exposure to different um, types of articles and stuff like that. And I don't, re I don't even, um, you know, limit myself to just bug bounty stuff either. I'm constantly reading reports. Um, and especially with my PhD, I'm also reading research papers as well. So I get this really wide exposure to everything. Um, and that's really good, I think, to kind of immerse myself in it. So that's kind of how I keep up to date. Where do you get your, where do you get the, the feed of the news feed of research papers? Is it on archive.org uh, or so R-A-X-I-V, so that's yeah. archive, right? Uh, I, or on Google Scholar or? You know, for the longest time, I didn't realize it was called archive. I thought it was Arbit. Or I, I didn't realize, <laughs> and I made him. I, I was talking to my supervisor, and I was like, "Yes, this website." And he was like, "You know, it's called Archive, right?" And I was like, "No, I didn't." <laughs> um, so I'm quite fortunate because I have a university email address, and obviously, um, quite a lot of the papers are behind pay paywalls, and my university pays for them. And if I want more from a PhD student, they'll pay for them. Um, so I keep up. Google Scholar is really good for keeping up with like research papers. I have a Google Scholar uh, alert set up for stuff like cybersecurity and NLP or cybersecurity and machine learning um, and a few other alerts that are not just related to my PhD, but also this kind of wider knowledge base of cybersecurity. Um, but also uh, stuff like DEF CON can be really useful. Like there's a reason why the DEF CON uh, presentations are called Call for Papers because it comes from the research world where we actually, when we write a, a conference talk, there's a paper associated with it. And so that's really useful because it's for, you know, stuff like DEF CON is usually not like an actual scientific paper, but for other things there are. So you can watch a conference and then read the paper afterwards. So even YouTube can be really great for finding new research papers to read. Of course. Yeah, so uh, adding uh, or uh, re reiterating your idea, going to Google Scholar and adding alerts to specific mm -hmm. keywords that you're interested in and getting emails whenever a paper with that uh, uh, keyword uh, comes out, that's a really, yeah. really, good, uh, really good way to actually keep yourself up to date with a very specific thing that you're interested in. Yeah, I think it's, I, it's, it's obviously going to be mostly academic papers where you do tend to get some like professional reports in there. But I mean, quite a lot of how you should read paper. This is like peak academia talk. The best way to read a paper is not to actually read the text of the paper, but to look at the references and see what they're referencing. Because that tells you, well, if they're up to date, this is what, this is the knowledge they're building on. So that can be really useful to finding stuff to read, even if it's not um, directly related to that particular research paper saying oh okay so they're referencing you know that DEF CON talk or that uh, Black Hat talk or this report written by Verizon Media you know it's like it's not just that one paper it's actually this kind of linked spider web of all these resources. Fellas check out my Python basics course to learn the fundamentals of Python you need in cybersecurity. there's a discount link in the description you're actually getting into a rabbit hole. Uh, I remember, yeah. uh, unrelated to cybersecurity, I read a lot of papers uh, with respect to biochemistry. Uh, and uh, I've been actually looking, so of course, one of the, as you've said, one of the ways to actually get more into the, the topic is to look at the references and then you just go through papers, read each through a lot of papers from the references and you kind of uh, find yourself reading 10 papers when mm -hmm. you actually wanted to read one paper. And the, the, the interesting thing is that you get a lot more knowledge because some of these papers, some of the reference papers 
are not necessarily 100% connected to the exact topic that you're actually looking into, but might be like 70% related. And that's how you actually get into more and more stuff. That's, that's how you actually get more eclectic knowledge with, mm-hmm. uh, within a specific field. So I just wanted to yeah. point out. I think you're also in a state where, you know, I don't think this just applies to like research. I don't think this also applies to cybersecurity. You can't live in your little bubble. You can't live in your little research bubble of say, web app pen testing. You can't live in that bubble forever because you know what? You're going to have to get out. Like if you want a pen testing job, it's not all going to be burp and web apps. You might have to do some network penetration testing. You might need to learn how to do some blue teaming. You might need to learn, you know, how to do purple teaming. You can't just stay in that one little bubble. You've got to expand your knowledge. And I think part of being really good in any field, but especially cybersecurity where we have quite a lot of um, stuff from all kinds of disciplines, whether that's machine learning, whether that's, you know, just taking general computer science ideas, you have to not limit yourself to that small area and really expose yourself to stuff outside of it. Like I do bug bounties, but I still read articles on network penetration testing because I think although maybe I'll never do it, it's still really useful information to know that I'm not just in this bubble of, oh yeah, this is what I'm good at. So I'm going to stick to that and never move away. 